city of Detroit. Um, also, he was president of Detroit City Council and everything. So we are uh, coming here today to uh, just sit down and talk with Mr. Cockrell and see what he's doing now and everything, you know, because see, some people you just can't forget because they made such an impact on the community in the city. And God will just have you go back and say, go back and find them so they can uh, let the people, let the viewers know what they're doing because many viewers uh, have a respect for this man and love for this man in their heart, the stand he took and the, the character that he displayed uh, while he was in office. But Pastor Donetta, what are some of the things we got coming up? Well, we welcome you to come out to our church, the Heart of Jesus International Deliverance Church. We're located at 14111 East Seven Mile Road. That's right at Seven Mile and Gratiot, uh, inside the Wow Center. Our service time is at 2 p.m. And our apostles bring in some great speakers over the next few months. Uh, on on uh, May the 15th, we have Lieutenant Kenny Gardner. He's at the Detroit Police Department. He's one of the major speakers on the first 48-hour uh, program that comes on Comcast Cable. AME. AME. And uh, the first 48 is a, a police show which shows uh, police officers and detectives all over the world sol solving crimes. And uh, Lieutenant Kenny Gardner is one of the main people uh, in that uh, in that uh on that show and not only that he is a preacher too he's a preacher mm -hmm. he is a preacher so he will be speaking on may what may 15th may 15th and will be installed in the office of a pastor this summer he will be a licensed pastor installed in the office of a pastor this summer and everything and he is a preacher so we're excited to have lieutenant kenny gardner 30 years on the detroit police department uh homicide here a preacher so we uh can a Detroit police officer preach? Well, we'll see on May 15th. <laughs> 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 Hope Lieutenant Gardner don't get me on that one. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, and on July the 31st, that Sunday, uh, we have uh, City Councilwoman Mary Sheffield. Uh, she's the co-pastor, and she will be speaking at the Heart of Jesus on July 31st. Amen. And so we want you to come out and hear the word of the Lord uh, from Councilwoman Mary Sheffield. And then we do have on uh, September the 19th, uh, mark your calendars for Councilman Andre Spivey. Uh, he's also a pastor. He pastors a church, amen. And he'll be speaking at the Heart of Jesus Church on September the 19th. And then upcoming on this week, this Saturday, on the Community Shall Be Restored television program, uh, we do, well, we'll be having Charlie Beckham. Amen. Charlie Beckham is with the mayor's office. He's the director of neighborhoods, all seven districts, amen. He's been on numerous mural staffs. And so he's going to be very informative to let us know what's going on in the neighborhoods, amen, with the mayor's office and the changes that are going forth there. So we look forward to you tuning in uh, to see uh, Charlie Beckham on the community shelf. We got show. somebody else from the mayor's office coming up soon, too. Who is that? Um, we also Government have, Affairs. Oh, yeah, Lisa Howes. Lisa, Lisa Howes. Howes will be on the program. Okay. Uh, yeah, she's coming up. She'll be upcoming with the president's show. She'll be upcoming. She's the director of government affairs. So stay tuned and we'll let you know uh, about Lisa Howes being on the program. I do believe it's May 7th. May 7th. And that next week, Wayne County Executive. Warren C. Evans. Warren Evans. So He'll be on the program May 14th. Amen. Former chief of the Detroit Police Department and former chief. Sheriff of the Wayne County Sheriff, Sheriff's, right? Yeah. Okay, May powerful, 14th. powerful man. We glad to have him. Okay, we done had uh, Mayor Mike Duggan on the show. Yes, 
the mayor, Fox 2 News legal analyst, anchor man now, I think, is what, Charlie, Charlie Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. So we thank God for all of the great, uh, this is uh, uh, Ken Cockrell's second time on the show. Mm -hmm. Ken Cockrell, welcome to the community show. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back, uh, and you're right, it's my second time on the show. It's my first time in my new role as Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity Detroit. So I appreciate you reaching back out to me. Ken, um, how long have you been with this organization now? Not very long. I actually just started in January, so January. I'm in my fourth yeah. month now. Okay. Yeah. So how's it going for you? You know, I really love it, okay. and uh, I should probably tell, tell you and also tell our viewers a little bit about Habitat for Humanity. I know. Many people are aware of Habitat, but they don't necessarily know exactly what we do. So Habitat for Humanity is actually an international organization. Habitat operates all over the world. We're in 70 plus countries. Wow. wow. And there are a number of Habitat affiliates. That's what we call our agents. We don't call them branches. Uh, we call them affiliates. So there are a number of Habitat affiliates operating in pretty much every state in the United States, including a number right here in Michigan, in Southeast Michigan. So I am the executive director of Habitat for Humanity Detroit, and we operate according to geographic service areas. So you know we're based in the city of Detroit, and that is where we do the bulk of our work. Our geographic service area is actually bigger than Detroit. So we represent and have done work in Hamtramck, Highland Park, the Girls Points, Harper Woods, uh, Lincoln Park, Allen Park, basically the eastern part of Wayne County. Okay, wow, wow. Uh... Now, is there a number uh, where the people can get in contact with you and reach out to you, yep. those that's uh, listening? Because you got a lot of supporters out there. Right. You spent 16 years yeah. on Detroit City Council. Right. You were solid. Mm -hmm. So you got some followers out there who still yep. appreciate the work that you have done mm -hmm. in this city and have a love for you because you definitely were you definitely were one who made a difference in there. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, how can the people get in contact with you? I'm not saying you got to give out your cell number. I think <laughs> some people do. Some people give out the office number. Yeah. You know, but I want to let you know these people will call. You yep. know, so, you know, uh, uh, how yeah. can they get in contact with you, Ken? Sure, absolutely. So I'm going to cheat and look at my business card just because, like I said, I've only been here a little over three months, so I still don't have the main number committed to memory. But <laughs> the phone number here at Habitat for Humanity Detroit is 313 521 Six six nine one. I'll repeat that too. It's uh, 313-521-6691. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can call that number. What I strongly suggest also, because it's a good way to find out about what we do and upcoming <coughs> events, things that we have, volunteer activities, is to visit our website. Our website is www.habitatdetroit.org. Okay. And Habitat, I didn't really say exactly what it is that we do, but the primary focus of Habitat worldwide and our focus here in the city of Detroit is to provide affordable, quality, decent homes for people that otherwise might not be able to realize that part of the American dream. Now there's a popular misconception that we give away houses. We don't do that. But what we do do is that we build new single family houses and increasingly in Detroit what we're also doing more of is we take existing homes that are in bad shape and we fix them up, we rehabilitate them. And then we sell those homes to families at a 0% interest rate on their mortgage. So it's very affordable. As I said, our primary focus is promoting home ownership so that people that otherwise might not be able to afford a house can actually get into a good quality house. And that's what we do. Okay, uh, <clears throat> do you have any community events or anything mm -hmm. yep. uh, throughout the year? You know, I. Uh, interviewed many of the people from the Detroit City Council, many Raquel Lopez, uh, mm -hmm. James Tate, uh, Andre Spivey, right. uh, George Cushing, Barry, Mayor Shepard, many right. of them. And they, <clears throat> one thing I know is they have a lot of community events, like right. three or four events in a month at coffee right. shops and all of that. Right. Do you have anything like that where the people out there in TV land can come right. out and reach out and uh, get a hold to you and, and hear what's going on, what you got going right. on and things like that because people, this is a community station and people like to be connected to those who are making things happen in the community, on the yeah. move in the community, making yeah. a difference. They want to connect with people like that. How can they connect with you? Right. Uh, do you got anything this month or next month or come, yep. this coming summer? 
I'm yeah. telling people out there in TV land. We've actually got quite a few events going on this month, as well as a number of events really going on pretty much throughout the year. Uh, now, some of the events that you talked about um, are actually events that I used to do when I was on city council. Right. I used to do quite a few informational town hall meetings and union right. meetings with their constituents. Right. Right. Now, because here at Habitat, we're a different kind of organization, and we have, as I mentioned, our primary focus is on promoting home ownership. So we don't really do a whole lot of informational events, but what we do do as a way for citizens to engage in us is we have quite a few volunteer activities. Okay. So in fact, this month, we have a number of construction and building activities that we're gonna be doing with respect to the homes and so forth that we're doing. So I would say for anybody that's maybe interested in <coughs> volunteering and getting involved in Habitat, if you wanna come out and help us build some of the houses that were built. So, so the they people can come, can, They can come to our website and they can access a list of all of the events in any given month, including the events that are going on right now. So if you want to see or want to learn about volunteer activities that you can participate in this month, I urge you once again to visit that website. Once again, that's www.habitatdetroit.org. So they can come out and help you all build a house? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, we have volunteers. Sometimes we have individuals that will come out. In other cases, we may have block clubs or community groups that want to come out mm -hmm. in mass and in numbers to help us out. The other thing that we also get a lot of, and this is something I want to encourage, is that we have businesses and corporations that will sometimes do adopt the days. Well, they'll take a day out of the month and they'll have their employees do a day of service. And they'll go and work with a particular social service agency or nonprofit. We have a lot of businesses that do that and we make it very fun for them. We provide food, uh, we can take pictures and do other things if they want to put it on their website. So that's always an opportunity that's available for corporations and businesses that want to support our work. <coughs> now, uh, do you have anything like that coming up? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're actually in the process of recruiting businesses and corporations and companies that want to come and work with us right now. Okay. So, again, for anybody that wants to get involved that way, just visit our website or you can give me a call at that number I gave earlier. Can you give out that number again? That number, once again, is 313-521-6691. Okay. Wow. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> you know, just li I didn't know much about Habitat, mm -hmm. but when I came here uh, today, I'm learning that this is a very, very wonderful company. Oh yeah, uh, that's doing some tremendous things here right. in the community. Uh, you spent 16 years <clears throat> on the Detroit City Council. Mm -hmm. You were the president of the Detroit City Council. That's right. Former president. That's right. How was that run on the Detroit City Council for 16 years? Tell us a little bit about it, if you could. Yeah, out there yeah. I love the time that I spent on Detroit City Council, I and mean, it was challenging. Because a lot of the, I mean, if I think about the 16 years that I served on Detroit City Council, there was a lot going on during that period. When I first got elected to council, which was in 1997, I took office in 1998. And at that time, the casinos hadn't opened up here in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. So you may recall that there had been a lot of controversy about who was going to be selected to run those casinos and concern about making sure there was African American involvement. It happened. It's a decision that was made before I came aboard, but many of you will recall that the late great Don Barton had been vying for one of those right. casinos. And when former Mayor Archer, when their selection process excluded him, there was quite a bit of controversy over that. So I came in in the wake of that. The casinos hadn't opened yet. I had to participate in the selection process. So it was very heated. And then later on, after Mayor Archer mm -hmm. left and Kwame Kilpatrick came in, mm -hmm. You know, he did some great things, but then mm -hmm. later on kind of got caught up. Right, sure. I sure. was involved in all of that. Wow. Um, wow. So I saw and participated in quite a bit during my time on city council. I loved it. It was challenging, but it was necessary work and it was important work. And uh, I still stay in touch with a number of the current council members. And as a matter of fact, current council member Andre Spivey is actually a member of our board of directors here at Habitat. Oh, okay. So we love having him aboard our group. He's provided us with some great support. So I wish the current council and our current mayor, Mike Duggan, all the best. I think they're both doing a fine job. <clears throat> Who are some of the people, you spent 16 years on the Detroit mm -hmm. City Council. Who are some of the people, Ken, mm -hmm. that you serve with on the Detroit City Council Put us, give us some names, some, yep. some of the people, because I'm sure those who, uh, you know, especially a political audience like we have on this TV show, 
right. uh, may not remember right. all of them, but as you begin to put them out there, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who are some of the people that you served with on 16 years in Detroit City Council? So to give you an example, when I first got elected back in 1997, uh, it was kind of interesting because at that time, I was the only new council member that got elected. Wow. There was only one vacancy of the nine council members oh, the nine council. on the council at that time. Um, I took the seat that was vacated by former council member Mel Rabbit who had been a long-serving council member. I think he probably had been on council for at least 30 years mm -hmm. and chose not to seek re-election in 1997. So I ran for that seat and I got elected, took office in 1998. And some of the people that I served with when I first got elected, some names I know that some of our older viewers will definitely remember. Mm -hmm. Marianne Mahaffey. Oh, wow. We know her. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We know her. her. Uh, uh, so, anchor, uh, anchor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, in more ways than one, not yeah. just for the council, but really for the so entire community. So she was community. really, she was really solid. She was know. great to work with. Um, okay. Somebody else that I served with too, who unfortunately just passed away. I, I remember, I think, which just last month that they had his funeral. Yeah. Gil Hill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gil Hill, who a lot of folks that they don't know him from city council, they seen the Beverly Hill Cop. Right. 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 They know that right. he was. Right. Right. He was the famous Inspector Todd, right. yeah. you know, yeah. who was staying on yeah, Eddie Murphy. Was always getting Eddie Murphy's behind. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Served yeah. Served with him. <laughs> served, I served one, served one term with I'm him. Also, him. somebody who really was very, very helpful to me and really was a great mentor when I came to City Council was Clyde Cleveland. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Clyde was so Clyde, he inspired your life. He kind of Clyde helped me out quite a bit. Well, I had actually served with my dad. I know, again, many of your older viewers will remember my dad, Ken Cockrell Sr. Yeah. My father actually served on city council, did one term on city council. He got he elected a, in 1977. He was a lawyer too, wasn't he? My father was a lawyer, uh, one of the best lawyers, really, not just yeah. the city ever produced, right. That's but what the I mean. country ever produced. Right. And also was a major activist here in terms of forcing positive change here in the city of Detroit. So Clyde had served actually with my dad. And Clyde he, and my dad used to go at it sometimes, okay. literally. Uh, in fact, they actually got into a fist fight once over something. Wow. <laughs> uh, but Clyde was real. Clyde was very cool to me when I got elected to city council. It was very helpful to me. Uh, gave me a lot of information. I used to go. I used to go into Clyde's office sometimes, and we would just, you know, we would just rap. The funny thing about Clyde, what was always cool about Clyde, which a lot of people may not know, but Clyde used to travel to Cuba quite a bit. And this is way back before, obviously, President Obama started to normalize relations <laughs> with Cuba, because mm -hmm. that just happened. So we're right. talking like 10 years or so ago. But Clyde would usually get to Cuba maybe maybe at least twice a year. He'd always bring back some Cuban cigars. I don't know <laughs> how he did it, but he always managed to bring some Cuban cigars. I don't smoke, but I love a good cigar every once in a while. So every time he went to Cuba, he'd always take care of me and hook me up with a couple when he got back. Wow, so, good, oh, wow. real good brother. Great council person. He was great to work with. Anybody else? Uh, I, I've served with actually quite a few. I mean, fast forward and getting you know more current. So current council president Brenda Jones. I was still serving on council when she first got elected. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, been, that's right. It's been interesting to see her go from being a rookie council right. person to now she's the a current. President. Right, right. Yeah, she's the current leader of council. A lot of the names that you mentioned earlier, you talked about. Uh, Andre Spivey. I, I served with Andre Spivey. Right. We served a couple of terms. Great brother to work with. James Tate, who I know you also mentioned. I think you said you either had or going to be having on your show. He was on the show with Sherry K. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Um, got a lot of respect for Council Member Tate. We worked mm -hmm. very well together uh, when I served on council with him. So mm -hmm. a lot of the folks that are currently on council uh, are folks that I stayed, that I did serve with. It's a mostly new council now. Right. So most of these council members, I really haven't had the pleasure of working with directly, but I've tried to maintain relationships with the city council, all of them, since leaving. And like I said, I think overall this council is doing a fine job. Okay. Uh, you were mayor, too, of mm -hmm. the city of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, I served for mayor for about nine months after uh, former Mayor Kilpatrick went to jail. Right. Uh, under right. the city charter at that time, there was mm -hmm. a provision that said if the if a mayor is removed from office due to being convicted of a crime, or you know, if a mayor, whatever reason, has to leave, right. the president is due to death or whatever, yeah. the president steps in at least on an interim basis right. until a special election can be held, which I did. So I served for mayor for about nine months. As you indicated, I was actually running to keep the seat. Mm -hmm. um, voters had other ideas, and they decided to go with Mayor Bing. You know, I, ultimately, that that's their choice. So I respect that and. 
looking at how things played out, in a way, I'm almost kind of glad I didn't win. <laughs> you know? Uh, because it was actually kind of nice after leaving. I mean, I was, I, I didn't like losing. Right. But it was kind of nice, actually, to go back to more of a normal and more regular pace in terms of being able to have more time to spend with my wife and with my kids. So, in retrospect, you know, it's the old saying, God has a plan and a design for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, God's plan was not for me to be in that seat on an extended basis at that particular time, and I respect that. And at the end of the day, a lot of positive things really came out of it mm -hmm. in terms of me being able to have more time with my family and so forth. So, and... And I left city council at the end of 2013 after the 16 years because I felt it was really time for me to move on and do something different. And now God's plan has put me here at Habitat for Humanity, and I really love what I do. And I'd love a chance, actually, as I was saying before we started rolling, I'd love a chance to come back on your show maybe sometime in the early summer. Okay. Because we are going to begin recruiting new homeowners on June 1st. Okay. That should probably about be about a two-month application period where we'll be accepting applications. So I want your viewers to keep that in mind, that if you are interested in becoming a homeowner, if you think that part of the American dream is something that you're ready to realize, keep the date June 1st in mind and start watching our website so that you can keep in mind when our application period will begin. And if you're interested in becoming a homeowner, you wanna know about Habitat and how you can become a Habitat homeowner, once again, feel free to call us or visit our website because there's quite a bit of information on how that process works <clears throat> that's available at our website. And what we'll do, we'll open up the phone lines when you come on. Mm -hmm. The phone lines are normally flooded right. with our guests and things like that. When you can talk to them, we'll open up the phone lines right. and everything. So on, on that day, Sounds we'll good. Be definitely be looking to get you back. Sounds and good. Uh, Pastor Donetta, hey, do you got a question or anything for former mayor and former president of Detroit City Council, Ken Cockrell? Um, I was wondering, <laughs> you know, um, how city council was then as mm -hmm. far as the charter right. and how city council is now. Right. Um, can you tell me what do you feel is the uh, biggest advantage or disadvantage right. to the changes that are taking place in the city? And with right. your experience on city council, can you tell us what you foresee, uh, what will be expecta expectation of, of any other change that we don't see now? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Uh, I think the biggest change from an operational standpoint in terms of comparing council to what it was like then versus what it is right now is, as you said, the charter now is different. So when I served on city council for those 16 years, the entire council, all nine members, were elected on an at-large basis. Mm -hmm. So what at-large means basically is you had nine council members that had to run citywide. Under the new charter, which was just approved by the voters a few years or so ago, we now have districts. Mm -hmm. So in fact, this council that's currently seated right now is really the first council under this new charter to be operating under the district system. So the way the system works now is you do still have two at-large council seats, mm -hmm. but seven of the nine council seats are now elected from districts. So those are smaller geographic areas that have been cut off on the map of the city of Detroit. So that's a huge change. I do support that system. I do think it's ultimately better in terms of forcing accountability okay. uh, for the council members. And the other thing that I do like about it is districts, I think, make obtaining a city council seat more practical and more within reach for grassroots political candidates. Because before under the at-large system, because you had to run throughout the entire city, you really had to either have a lot of money or had to be in a position to raise quite a bit of money in order to run a credible city council race. Now with council being elected from districts, I think for grassroots candidates, those seats are a bit more within reach. Now obviously the big change also that I think you kind of were alluding to, and it's important is that the city right now is undergoing a resurgence to a certain extent. But I think right now that resurgence is really kind of only being seen in certain areas of the city of Detroit. I mean, downtown is booming, <coughs> midtown is booming, Court Town is really starting to grow as well. But you still have a number of other areas here in the city of Detroit which are hurting. Right. I mean, you look at the area around this office. Yeah. Uh, certain parts of the east side, certain parts of the west side. So I think we want to make sure and avoid the danger of seeing certain parts of the city of Detroit left behind. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with the situation <clears> where you've got two Detroits, 
one which is white and well resourced, yeah. and another which is mostly blacks and maybe Latinos that is poor and not well resourced. And that's not something we can afford to have happen. Yeah. Okay, wow, wow, and wow. You know, uh, can you take one minute? We got two minutes left. Can you take one minute and speak mm -hmm. something on your heart? Mm -hmm. Whether it's Habitat here, whether it's City Council in the past, one minute. Yep. One minute. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Yeah, with one respect one to minute. well, with respect to Habitat, I do think <laughs> it's important that your viewers know that you know we're a faith-based organization. Wonderful. So we see ourselves really putting God's love in action. Our focus, as I said once again, is on promoting home ownership, and we do that by constructing and rehabilitating existing homes that can be affordable homes for people that otherwise might not be able to get into a house. And we want them to come in and work with us. We require that people who actually want to become Habitat homeowners do a certain amount of sweat equity hours, meaning that they actually work to help build their own home so that they feel a sense of investment and a sense of ownership in that, even before they get into the house. And that's what we're all about. All right. I've been your host, Prophet Cedric Banks, along with... Cockles Donetta Banks. And along with... Ken Cockles, Jr., Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity Detroit. All right. And give that number out for Mr. Cockle when they get a hold to him. That number is 313-521-6691. All right, we'll see you next Saturday right here at 2.30 on The Community Shall Be Restored. Can I get a witness here? Come and worship you. Come on, get those hands in the air. I do worship you. Yes, sir.